Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, bringing you relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Today, we have joining us Jenny Miller with Ross Mortgage. We're continuing on in our series on veterans loans. So we're going to be talking about VA loans um, in a little more detail. What we're doing is talking about some of the myths, misconceptions, and miscommunications that are out there on the veterans loans. So we want to make sure we're bringing you some facts and clearing up any of those misconceptions. So welcome back, Jenny. <laughs> Hello. Thanks Hello. for having me again. Yes, thanks for being here. And so today, um, so the first week was kind of a high-level overview, and we went through the different um, types of loans. Last week, we talked about, about a couple of the misconceptions being, um, you know, a zero down. Does that mean a weak buyer? No. Can you only have one VA loan at a time? No. So now this week, we are going to be talking about does a seller need to or is a seller required to pay the veteran's closing costs? And the answer to that is no, no, (laughs) which is something that that has been out there. You know, you think like, oh, if you use the veteran's loans, the veteran's not allowed to pay for anything, which is not the case. Correct. That would be correct. Um, And we're going to talk about the one instance where, um, you know, there's a situation that is created, which the veteran then in turn would have to ask the seller okay. for concessions. But, you know, anyone who's looking um, to obtain a mortgage, right, um, already has a mortgage, etc. as with any service, mm-hmm. right, um, even the lender many times does charge fees because it's not just the loan officer right. who is assisting the borrower, right, but the company. Right, from, right, right. When well, it goes know. through a lot of different departments to get that loan from A to Z. Right. Processed and to the closing table. Exactly. Yes. So, you know, there's a cost associated with that service. Right. And um we put them under the general umbrella of let's say lender fees. Okay. For mm-hmm. example. Now one bonus I'm gonna say, shout out to our company here. Yeah. <laughs> At Ross, we don't charge the veteran any lender fees. Okay. okay? So if you're a veteran and you work with with Ross Mortgage, then there's no lender fee. So you're essentially doing the job for free. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're, we're yeah. passing, you know, we're yeah. saving the veteran money. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, and again, yeah. it's um, something that we do in other companies locally. We'll do it as well. Yes. Um, so with the lender fee situation in mind, um, this is the one instance where um, the seller would actually need to ask the buyer, the, buyer, the, the veteran. Okay. The, yeah, the veteran so, should be. Yep. Uh, will have to ask for assistance from the seller, and that okay. is when, when the lender charges a one percent origination fee. Okay. Origination meaning loan origination. Okay. Um, an origination fee being the cost to get the loan to process a, the loan. Okay. To Z. Okay. But using an example of a four hundred fifty thousand dollar purchase price, for example, one mm-hmm. percent of the loan amount then is forty five hundred dollars. Okay. Yep. Okay. In those instances where an origination fee is charged, yeah, the VA then says, well, we've got a list of unallowable fees. These are fees okay. that we will not allow the veteran to pay for on top of that 1% origination fee. Okay. Again, in this example, I'm using 4500 on a $450,000 purchase price. Okay. $150,000, it's going to be a different situation. But regardless, the VA says the veteran cannot pay then for... Um, any additional lender fees okay such as like an underwriting processing type fee okay that's kind of like a double dipper so that's a no but in addition the va says um the veteran can't pay for any required reinspections Uh and appraisal um a settlement or closing fee charged by the title company Mm -hmm. application fees um in this case, the pest inspection fee. Right. In this case, right. when there's a 1% origination. In this case, okay, so let, let's back up just a little bit. So obviously there are, there are costs, right? Mm-hmm. And some of those costs, you, Ross Mortgage, one of them, the lender costs, you know, can be waived mm-hmm. um, for veterans. This is specifically to the VA loan. Correct. Um, but it, what is an origination fee? You're saying it's the lender cost. So is that, it, it sounds like that is, as opposed to just saying, well, here is your cost for underwriting and processing and administration, like, you know, basically listing out all the different groups that it goes through mm-hmm. and, and showing you it's just, it's kind of like a bundle. Yep, essentially. Okay. So 
if we were to itemize, um, I'm just going to use it in the average, right? Mm -hmm. If we were to itemize an underwriting, a processing, an admin fee, there's many names you can call these sure. different yeah. items or lender fees, right? Perhaps the total is $1,395, Okay. the lender fee. Right. When a 1% origination is charged, many times it's going to exceed you know, not only the lender fees, Right, it, it could actually exceed the total total fees, of lender fees, right? Plus the third party fees. Okay, and charge an appraiser is going to want to be paid, right? A title company, they prepare all the documents, they close, they do the title work, etc. Okay, right? Yeah, um, which yeah, those are necessary. Those are necessary costs right. and services that you need mm -hmm. to close on a property. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it, it's in a way it's a protection, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, the VA is watching out. Yeah, making sure that the veteran is not getting additional costs. Right, exactly. Put or charged them. excessively, let's say. Right. Okay. Um, in the event that, and you know, many many of the big box lenders tend to charge a 1% origination fee. And in those instances, the veteran can't pay those unallowable fees. Right. Then, right. Right. So that puts the, the veteran and the realtor that he's working with now in a position where when they structure their offer, they are going to need to ask the seller to contribute toward the remainder of their closing costs. Right. So it's, it's kind of crazy to think that, yeah. um, do you need seller concessions, yes or no? Well, the answer is, well, who pre-approved you? Right. Are you paying an origination fee? And a lot of times we hear, well, I, I don't know. I wasn't given an estimate. I'm um, not sure. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's that can affect then, of course, your ability to maybe get an offer accepted. Right. Yeah. Because that I mean, that is a key piece when you're putting together an offer, whether or not you need to ask the seller for concessions for something over and above, like I'm willing to pay X amount for the home. Um, and if you're asking them for additional, you know, you to, for them to pay some of your costs in addition to their costs because they have their own costs associated with mm -hmm. selling the home. If you're asking for those, it could be the difference, especially if there's another offer on the table in you, you know, winning, you know, and getting the offer mm -hmm. accepted and and not. So it really it's it sounds like it's it's very important if you are a veteran, make sure, again, informed decisions, right? Yep. So big on informed decisions. Make sure as you are looking at loan officers and companies who you're going to work with that you get in writing a detail of what it is, an estimate of what your closing costs would look like, and make sure you find out, are they going to be itemizing and showing you what each of the costs are that you will have throughout the loan process, including those third parties, or are they, which they can only, you can only estimate because obviously the costs come from the third party, but it, they're usually a good estimate. Or are they bundling it together and just giving you one flat fee labeled an origination fee because if that's the case it's going to put you in a different position absolutely than if you're getting it itemized so from 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 my standpoint as a realtor um i, I mean it just seems like an the smart thing the best thing for the veteran is to 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 work with somebody who's going to itemize i mean i think you want to be able to see what your costs are anyway you know you mm -hmm. want to be able to see exactly what you're paying for and as you mentioned, you know, you might well be able to afford all of, you know, all of your own closing costs mm -hmm. and third party fees, and it could still be less than this bundled rate. Um, and it could put you in a better position to actually get the home because that's really what it comes, you know, comes down to as well. Getting you in the home mm -hmm. in a comfortable way where you feel comfortable with it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that's so, the bottom line. It's yeah. just... Um, you know, the seller does not have to pay the veteran's closing costs. Right. It, right. So it's it's not it's not necessary. So, um, yeah, that's something de definitely to to make sure that you are looking into. Um, it's always why it's so important to to talk to and select your loan officer prior to getting to the point where you find the dream home. Right. It's you know, I, mm -hmm. I always tell all of my clients this. I mean, really, your first step should be talking to your loan officer, getting your pre-approval, because that pre-approval, it's not just the piece of paper. It's understanding everything that comes with it. Exactly. Like how did so, we get there? And yeah. what does this mean to you? And it's and what's best for you? Like you, So you can make a decision that's best for you. And the only way you can do that is having 
all of the information. Exactly. Um, you know, very so, transparent. Yep. Right? Very yeah. Transparent. And I think the more you educate, you know, borrowers, mm-hmm. the better, you know, the more confident they feel as they're out looking at homes. And, you know, they feel that they've, they're empowered and part of the process versus someone making decisions for them and yeah. what they think is in someone's best interest. So, um, you know, education, transparency, and um, options. Yep. You know, those will get you on the right path. Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming on and helping to provide some of that information so that our um, our viewers and maybe somebody that they know can get the, you know, get that information and help to make the best choice um, for them. So, if you um, if you want to stay tuned next week, we're going to cover the three more of the final of the top six of the myths or misconceptions associated with VA loans. Um, so we're going to be talking about are these loans harder to get through underwriting, harder to get them approved? Do they take longer to close? And are the appraisals tougher? So if you're curious or you've heard some things about any of those topics, you're definitely going to want to tune in next week. And um, again, so just to summarize for this week, does a seller, is a seller required to pay the veteran's closing costs? And the answer is no, it is not. So make sure you're talking to your loan officer who's well-versed in veteran loans and uh, so that you can make your informed decision. So thank you, Jenny, for joining us. Thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next Tuesday on Tea with Tracy.